Thor Love and Thunder is the latest MCU movie to come out, and the fourth movie to be starring specifically Thor, the titular god of thunder. And personally, I really enjoyed this movie. I thought that it was fairly entertaining, and it is a very fun movie to watch. Now, I also do believe that Ragnarok is better, but I do not believe that this is by any means a bad movie. Now, Thor Love and Thunder is once again directed by Taika Waititi, the man who directed Thor Ragnarok, and that style still very much carries over into Love and Thunder. It is a very jovial, joking movie. However, with the villain of the film being Gord the God Butcher, you do need to have more serious and heavier emotional moments within the film, and I do think that they managed to do that fairly well. There were a couple of moments in the film that I don't think landed the emotions that they truly needed to, but overall I think that the movie handled the themes and topics that it was trying to hit fairly well. Now what I find personally interesting is that this comic adapted two different, fairly prominent Thor storylines. They had chose to adapt the Mighty Thor, which is when Jane Foster got the powers of Thor and became the Mighty Thor, and they chose to adapt to Gore the God Butcher. Surprisingly, I think that they both worked fairly well in concert with each other, uh, considering how the movie kind of plays out and ultimately how the movie itself ends. Now, slight spoilers. I do actually prefer how they did Gore in the MCU than how they did him in the comics. And this might just be me personally, but I liked how Gore's story ends in the comic books versus how it ends in the film. Where in the comics we have the team up of three different Thors, the past, present, and future versions of the character. In this, Gore isn't defeated by a beatdown. Yes, as fun as it would have been to see three Thors team up to beat the ever-living crap out of Gore and kill him, I personally prefer how we got to the ending that we did, and I enjoyed it more. Uh, that is just a me thing, though. I do realize that not everyone is going to share that particular specific opinion. Ultimately, I find this movie to be a very interesting stance within the MCU. I think that this is going to end up being one of those either love it or hate it films for most people. And it's harder for me to explain why without getting into a ton of spoilers, but for me, this is middle of the pack. I know on like Rotten Tomatoes, it's one of the lower rated MCU films, I believe. I think it's entertaining, but I do think that its lower place in a lot of fans' minds speaks to a bigger problem with the overall MCU, which is something I want to get in into a later video um, and kind of give my opinions on the MCU as a whole. But I think, but at the same time, Thor Love and Thunder is the fifth highest grossing MCU film of all time. So clearly, people were invested in wanting to go watch the movie, and they clearly enjoyed it. It had a ton of reception to be that high up in the film's releases. Though I am interested to see how people are going to view this film in the long run. For me, I think it is a fairly good middle-of-the-pack MCU film. I wouldn't say that it's like top five, but it's definitely not one of the worst that we've had. I think continuing Himbo Thor's journey is a lot of fun. I personally also think that it worked fairly well that we got to continue to see his journey that he kind of started in Ragnarok and has continued since we saw him last. And I don't know about others, but personally I kind of enjoyed his arc. In Ragnarok, we see Thor lose everything. His hammer, his father, his home, everything gets destroyed, but it feels a sense of contentment and peace with what has happened. He has this sense that he will be able to move on past this and keep going. And then Infinity War happens, he loses most of his people, his brother gets murdered in front of his face, and we see him dealing with all of this internal anger and rage with Thanos and wanting to kill him just to get revenge. And then beginning in Infinity War, we see him kill Thanos, but that clearly didn't make him 
any happier. We see him enter a depression and he has PTSD and survivor's guilt that he deals with in a very negative way, as Fat Thor will clearly attest to. And he clearly had feelings of inadequacy or that he didn't feel worthy because he failed to defeat Thanos before Thanos could wipe out half the universe. We see this partially with his excitement at being able to retrieve Mjolnir when he goes back in the past. Then Thor's journey continuing from the events of Endgame where we see him in this movie where he has clearly started to work through those emotions. He has start working out again, taken back down, and gotten into better physical shape, but he's still dealing with the emotions of loss and grief that he has just constantly had to deal with because he's lost everyone and everything close to him in such a short amount of time. And this movie, I think, did a very good job of taking us to that point and seeing how Thor worked through those emotions and getting past his breakup with Jane and kind of the feelings that he had about her helping him bring himself into a better spot because of it. Just his continual emotional growth I think works really well. I personally very much enjoyed it. I also do not think that this is going to be the last Thor movie. I think we're going to get at least one more, or at least I would like one more. This doesn't feel like the end of Thor's journey. Now, yes, I realize he would most likely show up in a couple of other, like, team-up movies and stuff like that, but I think, I think one more solo Thor journey is needed to properly wrap up his story, especially with the way this film ends. And I personally really like how this movie ends. Again, without getting into spoilers, I think it worked very, very well. Overall thoughts on Thor Love and Thunder. I think it is a very entertaining Thor movie. If you enjoyed Ragnarok, you are most likely going to enjoy this one. I think it is fairly entertaining um, and a very good evolution of Thor's character from where we saw him last time we did in Endgame and where he is emotionally and the growth that he is going through because of the events of Ragnarok through Endgame every time we've seen him so far recently. Jane Foster, I think, as the Mighty Thor was a brilliant addition to the film, and I think it worked very well to help Thor work through some of the emotions that he is going through and is having now. Obviously, I think everyone else in the cast did a very, very good job. Uh, Tessa Thompson's Valkyrie is amazing, as always. She is brilliant. Korg, hilarious as always. One final thing that I think this movie actually managed to do was make me care about Jane Foster. Impressive, if you ask me, because I haven't cared for her the last two times we saw her in the MCU. I just thought Jane was incredibly poorly written when we saw her both in Thor and in Thor 2, and so, you know, you made me care about her story in this movie, which was, in my personal opinion, fairly frickin' impressive. With all that being said, personally, I think the cast did a very good job. The writing was very good. Overall, the effects look very good. Though there is one point in the movie where the effects are kind of Sin City. Yeah. There's a point in the middle of the film where they go to what is referred to as a shadow dimension, which obviously has a very dark and monotone feel to it because light can't penetrate it or something or it has its own light field. It was weirdly explained to the but it just, it felt very Sin City. It was very stylized and I enjoyed it, but it still felt Sin City to me, if that makes sense. But I, I think it just took one step too far into the stylization, but that's also just me. Overall, I think that uh, everything else about the film worked. Other than that, the effects looked very, very good. The movie is very pretty and very fun to watch. All the actors, I think, did a very, very good job, and the story was, in my opinion, well written. And with all of that taken into consideration, the effects, the dialogue, the acting, everything, for me, Thor Love and Thunder rolls a 16. So again, personally, I was very entertained by the movie, but I also do realize that it's probably not going to be for everyone. Now, I personally rated it high because I had a lot of fun with the movie, and even after watching it a second time, I still very much enjoyed it. 
I do also realize that this film is probably not going to be for everyone. So if you did enjoy Thor Ragnarok, if you want to continue seeing Thor's emotional journey be what it's been and continue from where we last saw him within the MCU, then yes, I would highly, highly recommend this film. But if you do not wish to see that or you do not care, you're probably not going to enjoy this one as much. Though if you are an MCU fan, you are probably going to watch it anyway. So that is all I have. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, it actually does feel very good to be back to filming, and so I'm hoping to be able to get more videos out to you all very, very soon. That is all that I have for now. If you guys would like to follow me on any of my social medias, links to all of those are going to be in the description down below, as always. But that is all that I have for now. I hope that you all watching this have a fantastic day, and I will hopefully see you next time. Peace.